Imagine you are in a camp far away from the city lights, surrounded by nature. You have a fire going and it gives you peace of mind. After all, the discovery of fire was incredibly important for our species. The feeling of safety that fire brings must have been hardwired into our genetic code as sitting by a fire still calms us today. Then you turn your head upwards and look up at the sky in the darkness of the night. Covering the horizon and as far as the eye can see, you see a huge and majestic landscape. A landscape full of little bright white dots. Stars. We have looked at them since the first human civilizations. We have thought about them, we have created stories, tales, mythologies. In a way they were very close to us. But with the advancement of science we discovered that they were far away from us. It took us tens of thousands of years to understand what they were. In the beginning, humanity had a limited and relatively small understanding of the universe. The planet we lived on was at the center, and all the other celestial bodies we saw surrounded us. But as time went on, we learned that the universe was inconceivably vast. We were astonished and in awe of this vastness. After the discovery of the subatomic atom, our fascination with this greatness gave way to a new fascination. The fascination with smallness. As we went deeper into matter, we discovered another gigantic universe in quantum dimensions. A universe that was as small as it was big. That's when we realized something. The limits of both size and smallness were unknown. In this video I will take you on a journey about the size and smallness of the universe. Come with me. Our universe is expanding at an astonishing rate beyond our own earthly environment. Trying to fully grasp this in any dimension can hurt our brains. We can use analogies to get at least some understanding, but that doesn't give us the big picture all at once. In the end, we have to settle for a scale. To understand the scale of the universe, we need much more than an intuition and cerebral gymnastics. It is like understanding large numbers with the help of scientific notation. Modern astrophysicists try to interpret for us these numbers about the enormous scale of the universe. But after a certain size, the numbers become meaningless to us. So, let's start a little further back. To understand the size of the universe, let's first try to answer the question, what is the universe? The universe is everything, at least everything we know. It includes all space and all the matter and energy that space contains, even time itself and, of course, us. The Earth and the Moon, the other planets and their dozens of moons are all part of the universe. The planets orbit the Sun, along with asteroids and comets. The Sun is one of hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and many of these stars have their own planets, known as exoplanets. The Milky Way is just one of billions of galaxies in the observable universe. All of them, including ours, are thought to have supermassive black holes at their centers. All the stars in all the galaxies and all the other things that astronomers cannot observe are part of the universe. In short, the universe is everything. Even though it is inconceivably huge, we are not very far away from it. No matter where on Earth we live right now, space is about 100 kilometers above us. It's 8,000 miles below our feet, which is about 13,000 km. We're technically in space right now. People talk about in space as if space is there and we are here as if Earth is separate from the rest of the universe. But the Earth is a planet, and it is in space and part of the universe just like any other planet. Only here do living things live, and the environment near the surface of this special planet is favorable for life as we know it. Earth is a small, fragile exception in the cosmos. For humans and other living beings on our planet, almost the entire cosmos is a hostile and unforgiving environment. The universe contains all the energy and matter that exists, most of the observable matter in the universe is in the form of individual atoms of hydrogen, the simplest atomic element consisting of just one proton and one electron. Two or more atoms sharing electrons is a molecule. Trillions of atoms put together make a particle of dust. Put a few tons of carbon, silica, oxygen, ice and some metals together and you get an asteroid. Or put 333,000 Earth masses of hydrogen and helium together and we have a sun-like star. It's relatively easy to describe the materials that make up the universe like a recipe, but it took a whole human history to understand its secrets. And what we know now is probably a very, very small part of the whole. For most people, for most of human history, the universe has been what we see from Earth. Thousands, millions of stars, the sun, the moon, the planets in the sky, 
whose patterns never change, moving around us like wallpaper, like a background backdrop, a mysterious white band, the Milky Way, stretched across the sky. The Milky Way is the galaxy in which our own planet and solar system are located. This ribbon of light, made up of billions of stars that we can see when we look out on a clear night with no light pollution, was called Galaxius by the ancient Greeks and Via Lactea by the educated Romans, both of which have their roots in the word milk. It takes its name from a story in Greek mythology known as the Milk of Hera. According to the classical narrative, when the legendary hero Heracles was a baby, he sucked milk from Hera, the goddess of marriage and wife of Zeus, who then threw him away, and a splash of milk created the Milky Way galaxy with all its stars. Before modern cosmology, mythology, especially Greek mythology, contained explanations and legends to understand the universe. For the sake of practicality, people categorize clusters of matter according to their qualities. Galaxies, star clusters, planets, dwarf planets, rogue planets, satellites, moons, rings, annuli, comets, meteors. These are all collections of matter that exhibit different properties but obey the same natural laws. Scientists began to keep a tally of these masses of matter and the numbers were crazy. The Milky Way contains at least 100 billion stars and the observable universe contains at least 100 billion galaxies. But the universe also seems to contain a lot of matter and energy that we can't see or directly observe. All the stars, planets, comets and black holes represent less than 5% of the matter in the universe. Of the rest, about 27% is thought to be dark matter and 68% dark energy. If dark matter and dark energy did not exist, the universe as we understand it would not work. Scientists label them dark because they cannot observe them directly, at least for now. The observable universe is the region of space that humans can actually or theoretically observe with the help of technology. It can be thought of as a bubble with the Earth at its center. It is distinct from the entire universe, which is the entire cosmic system of matter and energy, including the human race. Unlike the observable universe, the universe is probably infinite and has no spatial edges. Even prehistoric humans must have noticed that, apart from a daily rotation, the stars do not seem to move relative to each other, they appear fixed. Early nomads discovered that knowledge of the constellations could guide their travels and developed stories to help them remember the relative positions of the stars in the night sky. These stories evolved into mythical tales that are part of most cultures. When nomads turned to farming, an in-depth knowledge of the constellations served a new function. It helped with timekeeping, especially keeping track of the seasons. People realized very early on that some celestial bodies do not remain fixed relative to the fixed stars, but instead move back and forth over the course of a year in a narrow band of sky that includes the 12 constellations that make up the zodiac. There were seven wandering stars known to the ancients. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. The most important of the travelers was the Sun. Day and night came with its rising and setting and its movement across the zodiac marked the planting season and the harvest season. Then came the moon. Its position was associated with the tides, and its shape changed in an interesting way over the course of a month. The sun and moon had the power of the gods, so why not the other travelers? Thus, probably arose astrological beliefs that the position of the planets in the zodiac could influence earthly events and even cause the rise and fall of kings. Let us now slowly get to our main topic, the size of the universe. How has our view of the universe changed over time? Human understanding of what the universe is, how it works, and how vast it is, has changed over the ages. For countless lifetimes, humans had little or no tools to understand the universe. Instead, our distant ancestors relied on myths to explain the origin of everything. Because our ancestors invented these myths themselves, they reflected people's anxieties, hopes, aspirations, or fears, rather than the nature of reality. Astronomy is an ancient science. We know from drawings on cave walls, Babylonian, Mayan, Egyptian and Chinese observatories and their records that early humans were interested in celestial bodies and studied the sky day and night. Let's call ancient cooking chemistry and hunting physics. Unlike direct experiences in science like this one, no one could actually touch the sky. Even climbing to the tops of mountains did not help people reach the stars. Unless someone saw a meteor fall and found a still hot piece of the meteorite, our ancestors had only their eyes to observe the wonders above. People asked, how far away are the stars and the sun? Hipparchus, the scientist and mathematician of ancient Greece, 
made the first known catalogue of the brightness of the stars and their position in the sky. Classical antiquity reached its peak in the description of planetary motions with the Greeks, who were excellent geometers. Like their predecessors, Greek astronomers adopted the natural picture from the point of view of an observer on Earth, in which the Earth stands motionless at the centre of a rigidly rotating celestial sphere. And it is against this immutable backdrop that the planet's intricate movements through the zodiacal belt can be described. They developed a model of observed planetary motions with astonishing accuracy. The model was one of small circles on top of large circles, all rotating separately at uniform speeds culminating around 140 AD in the work of Ptolemy, who produced an ingenious work in which the centres of the circles were displaced to improve the empirical fit. Although the model was purely kinematic and did not attempt to address the dynamical reasons why motions are the way they are, it set the stage for the paradigm that nature is not capricious but has a regularity and certainty that can be discovered from. Experience and used to predict future events. At this rate, we won't be able to finish the story, so let's skip ahead a bit and come to the 1600s. When the telescope was invented in the early 1600s, Galileo discovered that the Milky Way was made up of countless stars. They were too faint or too far away to be seen with the naked eye. Suddenly, the universe was a bigger place. For the next 300 years, this vast city of stars was thought to be the whole universe. Then, as telescopes became more powerful, Astronomers discovered other galaxies. At first, these were seen as faint, blurry objects. The 18th century astronomer, Charles Messier, catalogued more than a hundred of these objects. They were called nebulae, which means fuzzy. In the early 20th century, no one knew whether these nebulae were part of our Milky Way galaxy or extended beyond it. At the time, most astronomers still thought that our galaxy was the whole universe. By the 1920s, Astronomers realized that these fuzzy galaxies, these specks of light, were galaxies beyond our Milky Way galaxy. A few centuries ago, people began to apply math, writing and new research principles to the search for knowledge. Like scientific tools, these principles were refined over time, eventually revealing clues about the nature of the universe. Just a few hundred years ago, when people began to systematically investigate the nature of things, the scientists not even the word natural philosophers, Researchers were instead called natural philosophers for a while. Since then, our knowledge of the universe has constantly leapt forward. It was only a century ago that astronomers first observed galaxies beyond our own, and only half a century since humans began sending spacecraft to other worlds. In a single human lifetime, space probes have traveled to the outer solar system and sent back the first close-up images of the four outermost giant planets and their myriad moons. Rovers have travelled across the surface of Mars for the first time, humans have built a permanently crewed, Earth-orbiting space station, and the first large space telescopes have offered jaw-dropping views of more distant parts of the cosmos than ever before. In the early 21st century alone, astronomers discovered thousands of planets around other stars, detected gravitational waves for the first time, and produced the first image of a black hole. With ever-advancing technology and knowledge, and no shortage of imagination, humans continue to uncover the secrets of the universe. New insights and inspiring ideas help in this quest. Yet we have yet to send a space probe even to the nearest of the billions of other stars in the galaxy. Humans have not even explored all the worlds in our own solar system. In short, most of the knowable universe is unknown. The universe is about 14 billion years old. Our solar system is 4.6 billion years old. Life on Earth has existed for maybe 3.8 billion years and humans have only existed for a few hundred thousand years. In other words, the universe has existed about 56,000 times longer than our species. By that measure, almost everything that has ever happened before humans existed. So of course we have a lot of questions. So, in cosmic terms, we've only just arrived here, and we've finally gotten to the point where we can create this amazing visual animation about the size of the universe. In this animation, which you can access at scaleofuniverse.com, you can go on an amazing journey from the smallest matter to the farthest point of the universe. You can also interact with objects and learn about them. Shall we take a quick journey together? Let's start with the size of a human being. It's about 1.7 meters long. A 6 meter giraffe, a blue whale is 30 meters long. The Titanic is 270 meters. Mount Everest is about 9 kilometers. Let's leave the Earth, which is 12.7 megameters. 
We pass the 64 megameter Minecraft map and reach the star Sirius A, the brightest star in the 2.3 gigameter sky. The Kuiper belt is 12 terameters. We are now light years away from the nebulae. The Helix Nebula, also known as the Eye of God, is 54 petameters. It is 650 light years from Earth. If you've come this far, it's too late to go home and get your wallet. The Tarantula Nebula is 18 hexameters. The Milky Way is 1.2 zettimeters. We're in what's called a local group, which contains about 80 galaxies like the one we live in. It's 95 zettimeters in size. Now 95 zettimeters doesn't make much sense, but we are too far away to visualize the dimensions in our minds at this stage. So, let's just use our imagination and compare it to the size of the other objects in the animation. The Virgo supercluster is 280 zettimeters. The center of this cluster, which contains some 2,000 galaxies, large and small, lies about 70 million light years away. Around here, we are now at the gigaparsec scale, where our brains will be the consistency of dough. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall is the largest known structure in the observable universe, measuring about 10 billion light years across. The diameter of the observable universe is about 93 billion light years. This massive superstructure is a region of the sky where gamma ray bursts have been detected in high intensity. Outside this region is a region called the Hubble Deep Field. Since its launch in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has made more than 1.5 million observations, capturing stunning objects like the Eagle Nebula and producing data that has been featured in nearly 18,000 scientific papers. But no image has revolutionized our understanding of the universe like the Hubble Deep Field. Beyond that, we are now reaching the limits of modern cosmology. It's a cosmic web with no boundaries, no end. What lies beyond that is left to our imagination. From here on, we don't know if there are stars stretching into infinity. You know how I said that the universe is as small as it is big, let's move quickly towards smallness. With the blessings of technology, we travel all the distance we have traveled outward, like a superhero bending space, and come back to the human scale. A basketball at 24 centimeter, a marble at 1.5 centimeter, an LCD pixel at 300 micrometers, a red blood cell at 7 micrometers, an ultraviolet wavelength at 60 nanometers, a cesium atom at 500 picometers, a gamma ray at 1 picometer, electrons, protons, and neutrons. And now we come to theoretical scales. At 10 atometers, we have the weak force ranges, quarks, neutrinos, and finally, in quantum form, the limits of the observable universe, which we have not yet gone beyond. This is a Planck length. The Planck length is a unit of length in the system of Planck units, first proposed by the physicist Max Planck, equal to the measure by which the slice would be forced to rotate. It is a useful unit in theoretical physics, regardless of whether it represents a fundamental limit of the universe. How far is the distance between the biggest thing and the smallest thing, and where are we in all this? It's astonishing to think about, isn't it? That's it, friends. In this video, I wanted to talk about the vastness of the universe, and in two ways, it's infinity. We are faced with a universe filled with billions of stars in the sky, beams of light disappearing into intergalactic spaces and mysterious black holes. However, even if we are just a dot in this vast expanse, being a part of this universe has a great meaning for us. The universe fascinates us with its complexity and diversity. Each celestial body tells its own story, displays its own beauty, and we, as small spectators on this gigantic stage, breathe in awe, observing these beauties. This blue planet, our home, is like a drop of water in this dark, cosmic ocean. Perhaps the only thing it shares with us is the awe we feel at the vastness of this universe. Wherever you are tonight or any other night, Remember that when we look at the stars, we are not just looking into the distance, we are, in fact, looking into the past. Because the light of a star reaches our eyes after a journey of millions of years, perhaps other lives, unknown to us, are looking at the same stars as we are right now. This is Eon Voice, see you in my next video, take care, goodbye.